When I met Nareri in the grounds of Tanganyika's Parliament building, the first thing I asked him was why he'd given up the comparative calm of life as a teacher to be a politician. Well, I don't know circumstances. Um, I had already, while I was still teaching, I had already got involved in politics, and, and the time came when uh, my headmaster offered me a choice, either to teach or to, to go into politics, and I decided to go into politics. Have you, as a national leader, found it a disadvantage not to have been put in prison by the British? I think there is a little disadvantage, but I'm not going to try and go into prison. <laughs> How do you think, Mr. Nareri, this progress has been possible in Tanganyika? I think there are many circumstances. Uh, we, we lack the difficulties that other countries have. We don't have a very serious uh, racial problem here. We don't have a very serious tribal problem. Our, our tribes are smaller tribes. They're not the big tribes where you have the problems of, say, Buganda or Ashanti. Uh, our tribes are smaller and therefore easier to integrate. And we have found, found it much easier here to build a nationalist movement covering all the tribes. What further changes would you like to see in Tanganyika after responsible government? Well, after responsible government, we feel if it is going to be really responsible government, what we want to do is to work. Uh, to build an, an economic basis before we take over finally as an independent country. And also we would like to see that we have a minimum number of local people in the, in the civil service before we take over. And those we feel will be really the two main functions of, of the government during the period between responsible government and independence. Do you think that democracy can really work in a free African state? It depends what one means by democracy. If democracy is the the expression of the freedom of the individual uh, an expression which is um, a freedom which is seen in all the life economic social and political uh, then i don't see why it shouldn't happen if uh, democracy means a change of government by the ballot box which includes that freedom of the individual i don't see why it shouldn't happen uh, i i'm quite sure that that in fact Africa is, is as capable of that kind of democracy as any other country. If by democracy you mean uh, certain institutions like uh, uh, numerous political parties or two political parties and the parliament and oppositions and all of this, that one doesn't know because, because the, the, the method of the preservation of the human rights, which to me is the essence of democracy, it will depend very much upon the circumstances and the history of a country. May I ask you, as you are a Roman Catholic, what you feel about the birth rate problem in Africa? Well, first, as a Roman Catholic, I'm, I'm opposed to birth control. And as an African nationalist, I, have, I, I find no difficulty because, quite frankly, in a country like Tanganyika, our problem is one of, uh, of underpopulation, not of overpopulation. Mr. Nareri, what do you see as the future for Africa, for all Africa? I think it's going to be a future of a common sentiment, a sentiment which has been built up during the, the whole, this whole period of, of struggle and pre-struggle. And I can see Africa myself speaking as a continent with a greater unity, greater uniformity than any other continent in the world. And largely, I think, on moral issues like, like the rights of man.